G'day guys, today's video is on car and caravan weights. There seems to be a lot of confusion on this topic. I've seen some pretty wild ideas being spoken about on social media. It's something that you wanna have a good understanding of and to get right. Um, it's relevant to if you're just building uh, a car and just like a touring rig with bolt-on accessories um, and even more so if you're planning to tow a caravan, camper trailer or anything like that. If you don't get this right and your, your vehicle, your caravan, camper trailer, whatever, or both are overweight, there's obviously potential legal implications. Um, there's actually someone over east at the moment who's going through the court process who was overloaded, had an accident and sadly took a life. That's gonna be quite interesting to see how that pans out. Um, but regardless of that, it's something you wanna get right for your own safety. Uh, being overloaded is obviously gonna affect how the vehicle pulls up when you do need a um, break in an emergency. But also potentially can void your insurance policy. If you are to have an accident and you're overloaded, um, your claim may be thrown out. So yeah, it's important to get this right. Anyway, what I'm gonna to do today is I'm gonna talk about my vehicle um, because I weighed that last week and I've got all the figures from that. And I can explain to you how using my weights, I can make sure that I'm, I'm legal, that I sort of tick all those boxes I need to. And I can also explain to you how I'm able to work out what I can legally and safely tow from my figures. So if you're in the same sort of predicament where you've got a vehicle and now you're looking at your options for a caravan, camper trailer or a boat or whatever, and you wanna know what you can legally tow, this video will explain how I figure that out and how you can too. So let's get into it. So like I said, I'm gonna use my car as an example. Now when this vehicle was stock and it came out of the Isuzu factory, they weigh the thing with engine oil in it, transmission fluid in it, coolant in it, only 10 liters of diesel in it, the spare tires on it, but other than that, it's a completely empty vehicle. There's nobody in it and there's no luggage or anything like that in it. Now when they weigh it, obviously the weight of the vehicle transfers through the axles to the floor. So they drive onto a couple of scales and they get a weight from the front axle and a weight from the rear axle. So that would look something like this, about say 1150 kilos on the front and the rear will be about 800 kilos. Now, if you combine those two weights together, that's gonna to tell you the total empty weight of the, care, of the car, and we refer to that as tear. So tear is the empty weight of the vehicle. So if I combine those, 1950 kilos is the tear weight, the empty weight of an Isuzu D-Max. Now, where you find this information in is, is on a little metal plate underneath the bonnet of the car. Um, another figure it's gonna have there is something that we refer to GVM. GVM is gross vehicle mass, and that's the total weight of the car. So that's how heavy the whole car can be together. Now the GVM, again, um, refer, relates to how much weight you can have on these front and rear axles. So they allow you to have 1350 kilos on the front and 1600 kilos on the rear. So this was empty, tear, this is GVM. That's how heavy you're allowed to go. Now these limits on the front and rear axle are referred to axle load limits. So you're not allowed to put legally any, they come out at about 800 kilos on there and you can't put any more than 1600 kilos on the back. And the same goes with the front, empty, 1150, cannot load any more weight on it to exceed 1350. So if I add those two figures again, that'll tell me how heavy the car's allowed to be and that'll be 2950. This is just for the Isuzu D-Max. Every vehicle, well, many vehicles will be different. So you need to check with each car. Now, to figure out how much weight we were able to put in that empty car to get to GVM, all we have to do is take the tear off the GVM. So 2950 minus 1950 is gonna give us what we refer to our, as our payload, which is 1,000 kilos, and that's how much we can put in the car until it's full. So quick recap, the car is 1950 empty. When you put 1,000 kilos of payload into it, we get to our absolute max weight, 2950. Now payload in, in includes things like um, all your passengers, so your whole family, the weight of your combined family is your payload. Um, the fuel that you put in your car is your payload. And then obviously any bar work you bolt on, dual batteries, bigger tires, um, any aftermarket accessories, any luggage in your car is all gonna count as payload. So that's the vehicle. Now, um, a couple of other uh, figures that are important to know is something called the GCM, which is gross combined mass. That's a limitation that every car is gonna have, and it refers to the total weight of the car and whatever it is you're towing um, has to come under whatever this figure is. And in this case, it's 5,950. 
So, Isuzu will tell you that you can tow with a D-Max. Max towing, they say, is 3.5 tonne, 3,500 kilos. Now, you may have noticed already that if the car is 2,950 loaded full with 1,000 kilos of payload in it, we're not gonna be able to tow 3.5 tonne like Isuzu tell us. Because if we load the car full with our 1,000 kilos of payload, the car's gonna weigh, at the GVM, it's gonna be 5,950. Now, if we're to tow a 3.5 tonne caravan, that's going to weigh 6,450 combined car and caravan if we're to tow that full 3.5 tonne. But we know that we've got a limitation of 5.95 tonne. So it's a little bit of a lie that they sell us. A lot of car manufacturers do it, in fact, most do. Um, you pretty much cannot tow your max towing if you're at your max, max GVM, if the car is fully loaded to what you're allowed to load it to. So I had Darren from Safeway WA come around and weigh my car. Now the front axle weighed in at 13.09 and the rear axle weighed in at 14.63. Now I weighed that car fully loaded with fuel, um, a long range diesel tank that is, 80 litres of water underneath the tray and the canopy full of uh, recovery gear, dive gear, fishing gear, um, the fridge had stuff in it. Yeah, I was totally loaded at touring weight. What I didn't add was, or what I didn't weigh, sorry, was the total passenger weight that's going to be in the car. So I've weighed the family all separately. Um, I've added a large margin for the kids growing and also for the weight of the kids' seats and stuff. And I know that my family weighs in at roughly 250 kilos. And like I said, that comes off your payload. It's included in your GVM, so I've got to add that. So if I add my front axle load, my rear axle load, and the family that are weighed separately, it gives me total vehicle weight or GVM, gross vehicle mass, of 3,022 kilos. Now, the GVM, the car was only legally allowed to be loaded to 2,950, so I would be overweight straight away before I even tow anything. Um, I'm also fairly close to that maximum rear axle load limit, um, but I'm definitely over GVM, and you can't be over any of these figures, so I would be illegal straight away. I'm not because I've got a GVM upgrade in this car. So in actual fact, that's what it came, that was the max weight from factory. Mine's been upgraded with a Petters GVM upgrade. And my GVM now is an extra 500 kilos. It's 3,450, which means I've got more payload. Cause again, if I look at my total weight, and I take away the empty weight, I can figure out how much payload I've got. I now have like I said, an additional 500 kilos, I'm at 1,500 kilos payload. So I can put 1,500 kilos in this car from empty to get to my total max weight GVM. Now it doesn't change my GCM, it doesn't change what I can tow, so that's important to know. It doesn't change my max tow, it's still I'm maxed out at three and a half tonne. But the way that we increase that GVM was because they've increased how much weight I can put on each of those axles. So now my, ax my maximum axle load limit is 1450 on the front and two ton on the rear. So car weighed in at 3022, I'm allowed to load it to 3450, so I'm legal there. Rear axle is always gonna be the closest. I had 1463 on the rear, I'm allowed two ton, and the front, you know, I've got 150 kilos to play with. So the car is all legal. So yeah, important to check your GVM, make sure that you're under there, and also check those axle load limits, so I'm underneath there. So that's pretty much all the stuff you need to know about the car weights. Now to figure out what I can tow, I know that my max combined weight of car and caravan can't exceed 5,950, and I know my car fully loaded with passengers and, and fuel and everything is 3,022. So if I get that total GCM and I take away the GVM of my car, which is 3,022, this will tell me what I can tow, which is 29. To eight. I'll explain that in a sec. So this is what I can tow, 2928. So let's pretend we're shopping for a caravan and we find one. There we go. Sitting on the driveway on its jockey wheel. Now, 
to find out the weights of these caravans, there's gonna be a little plate on the draw bar there. And that's gonna tell me a couple of things. It's gonna tell me how much the caravan weighs empty, which conveniently they call tear, same as the car. So the tear of this caravan, let's say it's two ton. So 2000 kilos. On that plate also it'll tell you what the total weight, the heaviest this caravan is allowed to be, the max weight. And they refer to that as aggregate trailer mass or ATM. Let's say in this case, um, let's go with three ton. Again, to work out how much weight you're allowed to put into this caravan before you reach your max weight, all you have to do is get your, you know it's three ton full, take away the two ton empty. That's gonna give me my payload of, on this one, it'll be one ton. So this caravan max weight is three ton, but we figured out that we can only tow 2.928 ton. It doesn't matter if this caravan's max weight was three ton or three and a half ton like a lot of them are. As long as we don't load it past 2.9, as long as it doesn't actually weigh more than 2.9 ton, we know we're okay. So although there's a theoretical thousand kilos of payload, in our case, really, we know that we can only load it up to about 928 kilos, and that's fine. So if we loaded this up to the max that we can tow, we've loaded up to 2,928 kilos. Let's call that the actual ATM. When it's weighed, roughly 90% of that weight's gonna come through the axles, or single axle in this case, and about 10% is gonna come through that front tow ball. It'll be sitting on the jockey wheel now, or on the vehicle when it's hitched up. So 90% of 2928 is 2.6, three, five is gonna be on the axles. And we call that GTM, gross trailer mass. And that figure itself, not so important at the moment. But what is important is that 10% of this mass that's all gonna be on that tow ball is gonna be 10% of 2928 is 293 kilos roughly. And we call that tow ball mass. So that's the, that's the weight that's gonna be on the tow ball when it's hitched. Right now that weight's sitting on the jockey wheel. So let's, hitch this vehicle up and I'll show you what happens. Just move these figures. Right, so that 293 kilos has now transferred onto the car. So the car was 3,022. We've got to add 293 tow ball mass. The weight's shifted from the van to the car. The combined weight is still gonna be the same. Combined weight of car and caravan hasn't changed, but the weight's just shifted from the caravan to the car. Because it's that 10% is transferred there and the car is now bearing the weight. So the van, when hitched to the car, is 2635. The car is now gonna be 293 kilos heavier. So our 3,022 kilos that the car was weighing previously, plus 293 kilos of tow ball mass, is gonna be what the car weighs right now. So three, three, one, five is the GVM of the car with the caravan on the back. Now, it's important to note that that 293 kilos of tow ball mass isn't all gonna go straight onto that rear axle as you might imagine, because what happens is as the car bears that weight, it sort of squats down a little bit like that. So weight's gonna come off that front axle and onto that rear axle. So that 1463, it's pr we're probably, if, although we only put 293 on, we're probably gonna get about 350 on here. So let's increase that. So, we've, so we added about 60, we added the 293, plus I reckon around 60 kilos or so is coming off the front onto the back. I'm just guessing. To actually work out how much that weight transfers, you really need to weigh the vehicle because there's heaps of factors involved, like length of the wheelbase, spring, spring rate on the car, um, weight distribution, a whole heap of things. So this is just rough figures. You still really need to weigh your car and check those figures, but I, I'm just trying to explain to you how um, all these different things actually affect um, the weight of your car. So um, yeah, so we've added 293 kilos to that rear axle and we reckon 50 or 60 has come off the front. So let's do that. So 1309 minus 67, that's what we said transferred. Leaves, that's now 1242 on the front axle. And then again, if you added those two weights, plus my 250 kilos of family, you're gonna get that 3315. So the car now weighs 3315. The caravan is weighing 2635. If we add those two figures together, 
that's going to give us our gross combined mass of 5,950. So things to look at, are we towing more than three and a half ton? No, we were towing 2,928, so we're sweet there. Do we have a GVM exceeding our max, 3,450? No, we don't, it's 3,315, so we're sweet there. Um, have we exceeded our GCM of 5,950? Nah, we're bang on, because we've worked out what was safe to tow. And our rear axle weight, we're allowed two tonne, it's weighing in at 1813, so we haven't exceeded that either. So they're the things that are important. You're not towing more than three and a half tonne, you haven't exceeded your GVM, your rear axle weights, or your combined mass. There you go, simple. One particle of unitanium has a nuclear reaction with a flux capacitor. Carry the two, changing its atomic isotoner into a radioactive spider. Thank you, science. I know it's quite a lot to take in, but what you really need to do is just to weigh your vehicle. Uh, whoever weighs it for you, if you go through someone like Safeweights WA, they'll actually explain all this to you and they'll tell you exactly where you're gonna be short or where you're over. Um, but grab those figures, grab a, a pad and pen or a whiteboard or whatever, and, and start playing with these numbers to get familiar with it. One other thing I'll explain to you actually while I'm here. So we know that the max we could tow was 2.9 ton. That's the max weight of the caravan. We're unlikely to find something that only weighs two ton to give us uh, you know, the 928 kilos of payload that these numbers would give us. Um, in reality, not so possible if you're looking at an off-road family van. We know for us that we need about 600 kilos of payload in a caravan um, for a family of you know, three or four and a couple hundred kilos of water. So. If we're looking at caravans that weigh 2928 and we take off 600 kilos payload that we know we need, geez, that's gonna give us a figure, um, two, three, two, eight. And that's about the tear we're looking for. So we, we know for us, we're looking at, we're, we, with this sort of setup right now and, and, and these sort of weights, we know we're looking at um, a van that weighs about 2328 empty, around 2.3 tonne empty, and has a, a max of about 2.9 to 3 tonne to give us our 600 kilos of payload. So these are the, the, this is how we've determined um, what sort of caravans we're shopping for, and it's something you can do too. If, if, if you get your car weighed first and um, you figure this stuff out. I'll give you one more example with the tinny on top. Um, because I know a lot of people are interested in that. So let's shift that caravan over there. The more times you do this, the more the easier it sort of gets as well. So another example, probably be good. Right, so all these figures remain the same for this. We're still maxed out at towing three and a half ton legally. Um, we have a GVM of 3,450. Empty is 1,950. Take those away from each other. We know that we've got a 1,500 kilo payload and the gross combined mass is always going to be 5,950. That can't be uh, increased for my vehicle in WA uh, once it's been registered, unfortunately. Other states may be different, um, and you can get GCM upgrades pre-rego, um, uh, but for me, not possible once the vehicle's registered in WA. I can increase the GVM like I have through Pedders, um, and that's definitely worthwhile. As you can see, the car itself, just before I even tow anything, was already gonna be over the factory GVM, but I can't increase that gross combined mass. So my, that's my real limitation, unfortunately. Right, so I'll show you the weights with the tinny on top and all the tinny gear in the back of the canopy. So the outboard, anchor, air ski, um, all that kind of stuff, fuel, the rest of it, everything was loaded up and we weighted again with Darren from Safe Weights WA. All these figures remain the same. Um, I'll just put in here my max axle weights just to make it a bit clearer. I'm allowed 1450 on the front and I'm allowed two ton on the rear. And then I'll give you the actual weights there. Um, just to let you know, a few people suggested, Cam, can't you just stick the tinny on the caravan um, and distribute the weight that way to make it easier so that you can tow a little bit more, but no, nah, it doesn't work that way. I wasn't actually exceeding the max weight of the car. My limitation really for me in this setup is gonna be the gross combined mass, and it will be for most of you. You're gonna, that's gonna be the first thing you exceed um, normally. So whether the weight's on the car or on the caravan, it doesn't matter because the combined weight was my limitation. So anyway, Tinny's on top. Darren's weighed my rig. 
and he's given me my front and rear, rear axle weights, which were, so my front axle weights were 1276. Now that's lighter than last time, and the reason is there's a lot of weight over that rear axle. So the car's sort of doing a bit of a squat like that at the moment. It's lifted some of that weight off the front and it's put it on the rear. So you're gonna find the rear is gonna be significantly heavier, which it was. It's 1856. Now straight away, before we even tow anything, we can see we're really close to that rear uh, axle load limit. In fact, what are we? We're 144 kilos off. Going off that, like I said, when you tow something, you roughly have 10% ball weight. So if I know I'm 144 kilos off that rear axle, I know that I'm not towing any more than 1.4 tonne, um, working off that 10% ball weight, that would put around 144 kilo on the rear. I know that towing more than 1.4 tonne, I'm gonna to exceed that rear axle load limit straight away. So we've got an issue there already, but let's keep going. Let's add on 250 kilos, the family weight, because remember the family weren't in the car at the time. So add 250. Combine these two figures with the 250 and that tells me what the car weighed in at um, with the family, which would be 3382, so that's the GVM. Now, that's the real weight. That's my absolute maximum. So I can see there as well, I'm only 70 odd kilos off um, the car being overloaded. So. Like I said, working off 10% ball mass, if I can only have 70 kilos of weight on the tow wall before I exceed my GVM, I'm really limited to towing a box trailer, something around 700 kilos. So towing a caravan like this, not gonna be possible. Um, what I have been thinking about and talking to Tiff and, and planning, I know I can cull about another 200 kilos off this. Um, I can take the, I've got an 80 litre water tank that was full underneath the car. I can take that off because I'm going to have water in the caravan. Um, and the tank itself weighs 20 kilos. So I can take 100 kilos from there. I'll remo I can remove the winch. There's 30. So that's 130. I can swap to alloys. That saves me about four kilos a corner. So now we're looking at about 100, 150 total. Um, and then I can, these drawers in the back of the canopy, I can remove them as well. So I can remove a couple of them. Uh, and I can quite comfortably cull about 200 kilos out of the cull, out of the um, car. So just for argument's sake, just to so show you what we're looking at, if I remove 200 kilos, and this is the kind of stuff you do when you get your weights for your car before you buy a caravan. Um, these are the sort of things, you weigh it, you figure out where you're at, and then you either shift some weight around. Um, sometimes you have to shift weight from the car into the caravan so that you don't go over GVM. Um, sometimes you have to remove weight altogether. Sometimes you just have to look at towing smaller vans. So these are the things you work out and this is the reason why it's really important to weigh your car. So for me, with the tinny, oh, and the other thing was that tinny weighs 170 kilos, which is stupid. Um, there are other tinnies, similar size that are about 80 kilos. So I could save another 100 there, I forgot about that. So quite comfortably, we know we can cull around 300 kilos off the vehicle and the tinny. That would give us a, a GVM of around, um, let's just say 3,100 kilos to be safe. Uh, so now to work out what sort of van we're towing with that, again, um, 5,950 is our combined mass. If we take away 3,100 kilos, the GVM of the car, we know we're looking at vans with a max load, a max weight of 5,950 minus 3,100 of 2,850. So that's the max sort of weight we can tow. So that's the ATM we're looking at. And then we know for us, um, we need at least 600 kilos of payload, which is gonna give us um, 2.250 tear. So what does that all mean? We're looking for a caravan with a, when we have a look on the plate, it's gonna have a tear of 2,250. Um, and uh, like I said, the ATM, the max weight, doesn't really matter if we're looking at a three and a half ton van, a three ton van, a 2.8 ton van, um, we'd scrape in on a 2.8 ton, that'd give us 550 kilos of payload. But the most important thing is we need a tear of 2,250 so that we've got 600 kilos of payload before we exceed um, that 2,850 uh, 
combined with that car gives us a combined mass of under 5.95 ton. So that's what we're looking at. And then what I would do from here, because the issue is that we find a, um, you know, for argument's sake, let's just say 2850, because that's what we really want. And we know it's got a payload. 2850 minus 2250 gives us our payload which is 600 kilos. That's ideally what we'd want with the tinny. What I would do before I went out and bought a 2.85 ton um, caravan, because I'm so close to that rear uh, axle load limit at the moment, I would uh, get the, I would strip all that weight off the car, um, get the lighter tinny so I can cull my 300 kilos beforehand. I would get the whole family in the car and I would weigh the car with the tinny on top again and see where that, because right now I can see my biggest limitation is gonna be that rear axle load limit. So I'd wanna make sure um, that I could handle the tow ball mass of this caravan coming onto the car, which we know is gonna be about, if it weighs 2850, we know that tow ball mass is gonna be roughly 10% roughly of that. It's gonna be 285 kilos. So I wanna make sure that I've got 285 kilos of GVM left, which it looks like I would. Uh, I've got four, five, uh, 350 kilos of GVM there, um, but I'm gonna be real close to that rear axle load limit, like I said. So yeah, I'd wanna strip all that weight, weigh the car first with the family in, and just make sure that I'm gonna be under that two ton with the tow ball mass on, remembering that quite a bit of weight is gonna shift onto that as well once I'm hitched on. Um, yeah, now that 10% tow ball mass, um, that's not a hard and fast rule, I'm just giving you an average. Um, tow ball mass can be anywhere from sort of 7% to um, 12%, um, anywhere in that sort of ballpark it's gonna tow okay. Things that impact that tow ball mass is how much crap you bolt onto the front of your draw bars and, and um, adversely how much stuff you've got hanging off your rear bar. So you can get tow ball scales for like 60 bucks from Repco um, and they're quite a good way to um, shift some weight around and see where you're at. Uh, so you might find that moving bikes, if you've got bikes on the draw bar, you remove, put them on the rear bar and, and, and that might sort out that weight for you. Maybe shifting from nine kilo gas bottles to four and a half or moving some tools out of your toolbox and putting them in a rear um, boot, things like that um, until you get close to that 10%. Another important thing to note, um, the angle that you're towing your caravan at is really important. If you're slightly nose down on the caravan, you're gonna increase your tow ball weight because um, that weight's gonna shift onto the front. And then what happens is, you know, that kicks, kicks up the front of the car. You've got less weight on the front, which impacts your steering, impacts the handling. Um, you really want that nice, neutral, sort of flat angle. Adversely, if you've got, if you're sort of nose up, um, it uh, doesn't so much concern the, 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 hand, the steering and the handling of the car but having weight shifted back like that seems to make caravans want to wag. Um, so you sort of sway, if you've, and if you've ever experienced that, it's quite a frightening thing. So you, you do need to be like a neutral kind of angle there, like I said. Ways that you can change that angle. Um, if you've got a good, the correct spring rate in your, in your vehicle, that's gonna help. Um, dropper hitches, um, just to, to get that angle right, that'll sort that out. It is really important to have the right spring rate in your car for all the weight you're carrying in the back and also for whatever you're towing. So places like Petters, what they do is, um, I know my Petters store, I think they all do, they can actually weigh your car with all your accessories on it at a Petters store um, and they can tell you what spring rate you need. And if you explain what sort of um, mass you're towing, uh, they can account for that as well. Um, some people sort of band-aid fix that. This is just my personal opinion, but some people band-aid fix that with airbags. Not a big fan of that, especially on a leaf sprung vehicle. Leaf springs, if you have a look underneath your car, um, the spring goes from eye to eye and all that weight is supported over that span of chassis. If you put an airbag in the middle, the chassis is just not designed for that. Um, so you're better off just getting the spring rate correct. Uh, and also people look at load uh, or weight distribution bars that go from the draw bars of the van to the tow bar of the um, of the car and that kind of pushes some weight down on the front sort of redistributes that weight they can be a li little bit limiting off-road um, and again personally just my opinion I feel like it's a little bit of a band-aid fix if you distribute that weight correctly so that you've got about 10% on the front and then you get the spring rate your springs are, are, the, are the right ones for the job um, I don't I really don't think you need those sort of things um, my opinion uh, I certainly uh, won't run them in any of my setups. 
Other things to note, tyres have safe uh, sort of working load limits. They, there is some numbers actually on the sides of your tyre that uh, you can have a look online and they relate to the maximum speed tyres can do and also the maximum weight they can carry. As to rims, uh, not so important on small, smaller sort of mid-sized vehicles like this, even with a GVM upgrade. Um, but certainly once you start looking at Land Cruisers with GVM upgrades where you're getting up to around the four tonne mark, definitely check your rims, check your tyres. Uh, you, you'll probably find that you've got to uh, upgrade those. Tow bars, um, check the tow ball, tow ball itself and if, if you've got a ball coupling and the tow bar um, to make sure that it's up for the tow ball weight that you're going to have on it. Mine's 350 kilos, which is fairly common for this kind of vehicle, but many are only 300 kilos or, or 250, 280. So check that. Yeah, I think that's about it. So for us, without the tinny, we're sort of looking at about a three tonne caravan um, with the tinny on top. We're looking at around a 2.8 tonne caravan. Both of those scenarios can give us around 600 kilos of payload in the, in the van, which we know for us is enough. And we've just got to check that we don't exceed rear axle load limits, um, your GVM of the car, or the gross combined mass of, of car and caravan. They're the things that are really important. A lot of people overlook that rear um, axle load limit, um, but it's very easy to go over that. If you're close to GVM, you, you're gonna find that you've probably already exceeded your rear axle load limit when you're towing things, especially if you've got canopies and tinnies and stuff. Uh, but whatever way we go, we are looking culling a little bit of weight out of the car. And if we bring the tinny, certainly we're gonna look at a lighter tinny. I know there's a, uh, I think the Mako Craft's about 80 kilos. Otherwise, maybe an inflatable or something. Um, maybe a kayak, I don't know. <laughs> maybe just a boogie board. We'll see what happens. Anyway, I hope that helped you guys. Like I said, really important to get your head around this because there are potential fines, um, issues with your insurance if you're trying to make a claim when you have an accident. Um, and just for your own safety and the safety of the other people on the road, it's important to get this right. Also, so there's less stress on your vehicle and your caravan. Oh, and on that note, a lot of people say you're crazy towing a caravan that's heavier than your car, um, or you're crazy running right on your limits. That's your opinion. Um, I know there's big safety margins uh, written into all this sort of stuff because car manufacturers um, don't want to risk uh, litigation. They don't want to risk any sort of liability, um, you know, in the event of an accident. So those these maximums that they give you, um, your max payload, your max GVM, your max axle load limits, there's big margins in there um, to make sure that it's, you know, as safe as it can be. That's my opinion anyway. I hope that helps some of you guys. Um, watch it again. I'll put some time stamps in the bottom so you can jump to different sections because I know it's quite a lot to take in. Uh, and I'll do a little glossary of terms in the description below as well for all these different things if you've forgotten. Uh, yeah, cheers guys. See you in the next one. Hopefully we'll pick a caravan soon. As soon as we do, we'll let you know. Cheers.